Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kushstein. Welcome to Austria. Norwich City have uh, just played their penultimate pre-season friendly here against Toulouse. And uh, they haven't to lose. They have to win. They've beaten the French side 2-0 here. Uh, goals courtesy of new signing Christian Fashnacht, who, uh, who met a Gabriel Sarra uh, corner with uh, a header. And then Gabriel Sarra himself getting on the score sheet with a curled free kick. I'm going to level with you. I am stood at the top of what is... Uh, Temporary kind of um, gantry, I guess. You, this is the view that you would have had if you watched on the stream. This is where the cameras are. Uh, I'm not very good with heights, so this could be quite a fun video verdict uh, as I almost stand here, um, basically as I am holding on to my tripod for dear life. This has three sections. I'm at the very top. I am scared, uh, but it will be okay and we'll get through it together because we've got 100 and... Whoa, 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 what was it? It was uh, three three thirds of football to speak about uh, and, and really interesting game because we saw so much contrast and so much uh, stuff. So um, yeah, it, it, it's finished 2-0 but there's plenty of stuff to uh, uh, <laughs> there's so much to um, untangle from that really uh, but yeah, that's that's the headline uh, over those three thirds, Norwich City have won 2-0, two goals um, Fashion act uh, on his first official day as a Norwich City player and Gabriel Sara. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, the first quarter was, uh, well, actually, probably you could probably put the first two quarters together, actually. I thought it was, um, I thought Norwich started the game okay. Certainly the first opening 15 minutes, they were looking to press from the front. They were looking to be aggressive with the way that they went after Toulouse. Um, and I think you could see that. And I think generally pre season as a theme, uh, and this is what I say, you can take themes from pre season, you can't necessarily take anything more than that. Um, as a theme, they've looked structurally better defensively and, and their work against the ball and, uh, and out of possession. I spoke to Shane Duffy after the game and he pretty much concurred with that conclusion. They've done a lot of work on it. I think Narcis Palash has, has, has led a lot of the training sessions on it. And uh, you can see the real improvement that they're showing as a defensive unit now. There's less of the individual errors. There's more organisation. I think teams are, are finding it hard to break down throughout really the three thirds. I'm struggling to think of too many saves that either Angus Gunn or Tim Krull had to, had to make. There were a couple of shots from from range uh, and there was one that flashed uh, by Cruel's post late on but beyond that um, it w they were fairly good at keeping Toulouse at bay um, and that again has been a theme of pre-season it was only a, a Dimi Yanoulis kind of switch off I guess uh, Alkmaar that, that saw them concede there so uh, and across the three trips they've only conceded once uh, so in Germany that's right isn't it yeah Germany they, they kept two clean sheets obviously conceded against Alkmaar they've kept a clean sheet here today so three trips, four games, they've conceded one goal. That's pretty good going considering how they uh, how they ended the season shipping goals at, uh, at a rate of knots, those defensive errors that we've become accustomed to. So that's that's really positive that we've seen. And we've seen, again, a lot more willingness to press and a lot more willingness to, to do clever stuff off the ball, I would say. Um, so that's another real positive and a theme of pre-season that we've seen. Structurally, defensively against the ball, they're looking better. Um, I also, and again, I don't want to drone on about this because I spoke about it at length um, in the Alkmaar one, but for me, the question is low blocks at Carrow Road. I just foresee some issues when Norwich are facing those um, and how they respond to those and, and answer those questions, I guess, when teams who maybe are struggling or come to Carrow Road with that approach out of possession, how they're able to unlock that. Because at the moment, all I'm seeing really on that front is a lot of crossfield ball to wide areas, which, you know, by and large have worked. But there will, there will become a point where teams do research on them. We, we all know how football works and the level of detail and analysis and statistics there are in the game. Now, teams will work that out pretty quickly. So for me, I just want to see, and maybe this is what I'm emerging from pre-season with, I just want to see more answers on that front. I just want to see them do more in terms of breaking low blocks and compact defences and finding solutions and answers to them. Um, that's probably the major question mark for me that has emerged from, from pre-season. And I actually felt, when Norwich didn't have Sarah and Nunez and McLean on the pitch, there was a really stodgy period. And actually, David Wagner said that he felt their worst period was the, the opening 15 minutes of that second third. And I would agree. I felt it was uh, a bit disjointed, a bit... They, they really struggled to create opportunities. And for as much as it's true that, um, for example, Toulouse didn't create too much, it's also true that Norwich didn't, by and large, certainly for the for the opening two thirds. So then what changed in the final third? There was more fluidity about Norwich. There was uh, better combinations. They were, they were doing a, a lot of stuff in possession a lot better. Uh, the pitch, David David said post-match, uh, the grass is a little bit long. Um, 
it's a little bit dry. So I think when the rain came, it probably allowed Norwich to play a little bit slicker and play forward quicker. But but also felt the movement off the ball was a lot better. You've got Sara and Nunez dropping into pockets rather than when they play those two strikers. You have Josh Sargent dropping deep, and that really takes him away from the area of the pitch that he's that he should be in and that his strengths are in. Actually, I thought Adam Ido when he dropped back as well. There was some some nice moments of link play from him. So. I felt from this game that Norwich played better when they didn't have the conventional two strikers up front and it was Nunez off somebody or it was Sarah off somebody and I felt that helped um, with their fluidity and, and I felt Jolis and Yunulis combined well in, in that final third and they created a lot of space down the left-hand side with, with, with the work that they did. Fashion Act as well, a very intelligent player because with all of these players going short, he seems to be the, the sort of player that wants to go long and wants to get on the end of things and be in and around the box scoring goals. And um, David... Wagner said he was a different type of winger and a different type of wide player. Um, so that for me is, is is the interesting one because we are seeing now a team that works hard, a team that defends well, a team that structurally looks a lot better. But I still think there are questions with their work in possession and what they want to do with it and uh, how they answer some of the questions that teams will pose of them at Carrow Road in particular next season and their success and how successfully they manage to do that may well hinge on, uh, you know, may well depend how successful they are moving into the new season. Of course, the beauty of pre-season, as we know, is that teams can emerge at the start of the championship season and things can be radically different. Um, but by and large, I, I think there is, that, that's, that's not always the case. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one to observe and it's been an interesting pre-season to observe. And of course, the, the nature of being more defensively sound is that there's less air emphasis on being creative you don't need to be creative in the same sense you can uh you can be creative you, i guess it, it, there's less um pressure i guess to be as creative because you only need one opportunity if you can keep it tight at the other end and i felt that they, they're doing that now a lot better than they were so there's a lot of positives there and i don't want these verdicts just to come across as me being negative or me picking holes and stuff all the time because they're doing a lot of stuff better i think for me i'd just like to see a bit more in possession a little bit more creativity um and again, I, I've spoken about this before, how it's probably going to be the system that creates the chances rather than maybe creativity in the conventional sense that we think of it as an Emi Buendia or Wes Hulan individuals. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 one to watch, I think, as, as we move forward. Um, Toulouse, I, I think, ha having a, a brief look at the team they played in the final quarter. And again, not to diminish what Norwich City did because they did a lot of stuff well. Again, I need to keep repeating that. Um I think I think it was uh, Toulouse side towards the end of the game that consisted of a lot of young players and uh, players who are in the academy. That's not to, again not to diminish what Norwich did, which was uh, move them around, created space a lot better, uh, and looked a lot better in possession as well. So um, yeah, it's it's a lot of interesting stuff there and a lot of interesting stuff that we've seen throughout pre-season so far. Uh, I wanted to have a word about Callum Fisher as well because the more I see of of, of him as a footballer the more that I like. Uh, he is so confident in what he wants to do. He's really grasped the mantle. It's really interesting. It's sliding doors in football. It's moments. And uh, David Wagner spoke after the game about how he probably wouldn't even be in the first team at the moment if Max Aarons hadn't gone away on England under 21 duty and uh, Norwich maybe having a hole that they needed filling with in terms of a right back. And part of the reason that Barley Mumba was allowed to join Plymouth on a permanent deal was the work that Kellen Fisher has done, the strides that he has taken to be as good as he has been in this pre-season and he's really emerged particularly in the last few games as someone who's really impressed able to really confident in possession happy to step in happy to step into central areas as well with the ball but someone who's capable defensively and wants to wants to um defend and likes to defend and and, and i think we're we're seeing what is a, a good young player capable of, of deputizing probably for jack stacy uh, as it will be next season so I'm, I'm really impressed with him and, and, and in, uh, you know impressive more so the fact where he's come from non-league background playing for Bromley in the National League Norwich have, have, have plucked him up with the hope that he can produce something in, in a few years time and actually in four weeks he's been excellent and, and really looks a part of Norwich City's first team now that's not to say that he's going to be a starter in the championship by any means and there's plenty of improvement in his game to to go but I think the intent has been really positive from him and I've liked what I've seen he's, he's brought a positive positivity I guess to, to Norwich City's group and actually reminds me a lot of Max Aarons when he was uh, when he was younger and had that fearless fearlessness about him. Fashnak, obviously we've got our first look at him today. He only played the, the final quarter and he's been jetting here, there and everywhere.
there and obviously as an experienced uh, jet uh, as an experienced traveler now i can i can sympathize with him the the fatigue of, of those elements uh, and he's still got a bit more to do to secure a visa but overall a really positive first outing for him i felt showed his quality in around the box um scored a really good header uh, rose high estimate at gabriel sarah corner norwich are looking a bigger team now i'd say that as well duffy gibson uh barnes fashnak who, who who's six foot plus as well so they're looking a bigger team. They're looking a more physical team. And, and I think he brings that as well. There's some um, really cute touches. Really seems quite spatially aware. Again, I'm speaking off the basis of seeing him for 40 minutes. So this might not be the best kind of uh, analysis that you've seen. And, uh, you know, um, and, and yeah, but I had a couple of good opportunities. Uh, Liam Gibbs put the ball across the, I think it was Gibbs who put the ball across the, the, the box and he tried to get on to the end of that full stretch uh, and, and couldn't quite. And then there was one as well. I think it was Unulis down the left, cut the ball back and he curled a shot wide. So probably saw there uh, what we maybe expected and, and maybe what David has spoken about in terms of him being buzzing in and around the box, being aware, being um, capable and timing runs really well to, to get on the end of things. It looks like somebody who is going to be capable of chipping in with a, with a few goals. So I, I, again, really, really good first impression. It was only a very, very brief first impression. And hopefully we'll see a bit more of him on Saturday. Shemeswa Poeta played at left back for the bulk of, of, of this game. Um, or two and a bit halves, a thirds of it, I think. Two thirds of it. Um, and I thought he started quite well. Not quite well. So maybe I'm overdoing it a bit. But, but started OK. Um, and you can see the logic, the pace, the fact that, that, that Wagner wants his, his, his fullbacks to be wider. And then he inverts the the wide players as such that probably suits Poeta better to be on the outside of that than on the inside. I felt he was better when he had Ben Gibson coaching him through the game. I think in, in that second third when it was Andrew Omabamadeli, he didn't quite get the same protection and communication and as well to help him positionally when he, when he got a little bit caught. Still think technically there's, there's um, some work to do. I, I think his first touch in, in some situations it isn't particularly consistent and I, and I think that's something he needs to iron out. But in terms of willingness and intent... You can't you can't fault what he's done in this preseason uh, tactically and, and probably technically you, you probably can a little bit so so that's an interesting one the fact that that Wagner wanted to take a look at him there particularly given Yunulis and McCallum I thought Yunulis uh, was pretty good when he came on actually and as I said that that uh, relationship that he formed with, with Jolis down the left was was good as well uh, in that final quarter where Norwich were probably at their best um, overall so. Yeah, probably no coincidence actually. And when we, you know, when I speak about creativity and you look at it, and uh, Sarah coming back, Nunez obviously an option as well. Those players feel like they're capable of um, capable of unlocking doors and capable of of probably finding answers to deep block defences. So, so maybe that's one solution. I'm uh, I'm not sure. So, yeah, that rounds off Norwich City's um, European trips. I guess this was the the final one of three. As I said, they've. Only conceded one goal throughout all of their trips here, which has to be the highlight considering the, the defensive calamity that we, we saw towards the end of last season. And you look at it, if you can defend well in the championship, then actually you get yourself in around the top six as a general rule of thumb. So uh, it's not a bad blueprint to have to move forward. And hopefully the solidity at that end of the pitch will bring a little bit, will um, yeah, make the, the top end of the pitch a bit more liberal and, and, and help them create a, a a few more opportunities a, a, a bit more consistently and Fashion Act hopefully will will help with that as well. Although I don't get the sense that he's a creator in that sense. I think he, he's someone who wants to get on the end of opportunities. And we, we've spoken before about the profile maybe of, of some of Norwich City's wide players. So uh, yeah, John Rowe looked bright as well in the first half. That's worth a mention as well. Beautiful backdrop for this game, as you can see behind me. Mountains galore here in uh, in Austria. I think I've put you on the uh, on the her, uh, as we say in Norfolk, uh, a little bit there. So I'll straighten you back up. Uh, this is this was a, a really good test against a side who won the French Cup and will be playing European football next season. So uh, I felt that I think their strongest team came in the second third, and that was the third that Norwich City struggled in. But again, without really affording too many clear cut opportunities. So yeah, plenty to be positive about there. Plenty to move into Saturday when obviously we're back at Carrow Road. Another real firm test against Olympiacos uh, and another opportunity to see what this Norwich City team can do ahead of Hull in a couple of weeks. But it's building up nicely. This has been a really good trip. It brings to an end our uh, coverage from uh, overseas, um, which has been brought to you with uh, with Cavill Healthcare. So thank you to, to those guys as well who've made all of this possible. Uh, thank you as well for all of your love on the videos, podcasts, uh, written pieces that we've done as well, be it in Germany, be it in the Netherlands, be it in Austria. We're going to record a podcast before we jet home tomorrow. Um, and yeah, it's been uh, it's been really enjoyable to to cover Norwich City on 
uh, on pre-season. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed what we've uh, what we've produced so far, and uh, we're gearing up for a new season. So let's hope so. Right, I'm going to get down because I can feel my knees getting trembly, and uh, my my palms are definitely sweaty. I don't do uh, I don't do heights like this. Particularly, this is kind of like scaffolding is the best way to describe it. And uh, yeah, I don't feel the most secure up here. So I'm going to get down. I'm going to leave you to your uh, what day is it today? Tuesday evenings. And we will uh, we'll see you at Cowra Road on Saturday for Olympiacos from Austria. Over and out.